tried to warn them. They didn't listen. Yeah! Every week, the Hoffman Show goes into the belly of the beast. We read those comments, baby! Never read the comments. You can leave your comments on any of our YouTube content. Uh, we stream live daily at the Team 980, and then we post the highlights there as well. Uh, many of our comments come from my page, at Craig Hoffman. Uh, and occasionally we pull as well from 106.7 The Fan's YouTube page, where we post full episodes of Take Command. Uh, speaking of episodes of Take Command, uh, a couple of comments on our breakdown of Sam Howell's performance, which I titled uh, Sam Howell's parentheses mostly good day i did get someone asking uh, anthony why did you put the parentheses in the title and i was like because it was a mostly good day like he did have the two big sacks i don't get the question and also it caught people's attention so apparently it worked because suckers like you are on this here internet I probably shouldn't call the commenters suckers huh insulting the audience bad yeah all right well uh because it we like a good eye-catching title. That's why we did it. Uh, all right, to the comments themselves, not those. Uh, this one, uh, which by the way, I don't think it's that Clarence Thomas, as in the Supreme Court Justice. Uh, but this guy's name is Clarence Thomas, spelled with an I. Never seen, you ever seen Clarence with an I before, Anthony? Like C-L-A-R-I-N-C-E? Mm, no. Oh, I'm making fun of their comments. You're making fun of their names. Although that does feel like it's a bit of a bit. <laughs> that is great. Clarence if, with an I. What if it is the embattled Supreme Court justice who is just on the internet DC sports taking? That'd be pretty hilarious. Good gracious. I don't, I'm, I'm going to doubt that. I'm not sure that man knows how to use the internet. Anyway, uh, quickly moving on uh, to the comment from this quote unquote Clarence Thomas. If your first-year OC installs a new offense with four new starters on the O-line and a first-year quarterback, how many reps would you want? Give me all I can get. I'm just saying. I think it's great that Sam played the other night, and I think it could be very beneficial in the long term. It's just important to recognize that those of us who said he shouldn't play a whole lot um, were more concerned about the risk of, hey, this guy seems like he's pretty locked in. He's on track. I don't know that he needs these reps they're good to get, but I don't know that he needs them, and I need him not to get hurt. And if he plays and you want him to succeed, you also are going to want to play other guys from offensive linemen to skill positions like Terry McLaurin, who did get hurt in the game. So, again, like it's a big risk-reward thing. No one, I think, was saying that there wasn't a reward for playing Sam Howell, that there wasn't upside to it, that there wasn't a reason to do it. And considering he came out healthy and the, the only bad thing that happened was that Terry is going to potentially miss a week but might not even miss any time, you can be like, oh, well, hey, we got it. But that doesn't mean the calculation was off on the front side, especially considering Baltimore played their backups and it wasn't quite max level NFL football as a training ground. Uh, Dave says, I'm not a Commanders fan, but I really liked what I saw Sam, uh, in Sam Howell. And to be honest with you, I was not surprised. I also don't care about the level of competition on the field. What matters most and what should have Commanders fans hopeful is that Sam knew what he was doing and knew where to go with the ball. He appeared to be in command of the offense and seemed like a quarterback that teammates get behind. I thought the play calling, albeit vanilla ice cream, really helped out the quarterback as well. Yeah, I think Biennemi did a good job, and he's still calling from a very small section of the playbook. There's going to be so much fun stuff that happens in this offense this year. Fancy trick plays, like sexy stuff that doesn't, like has a purpose. It's not like it's completely unsubstantive, but um, that's not so the kind of stuff that you run every play haphazardly. And that stuff's going to be in the offense, and I'm pretty excited to see what it does for this offense because a lot of that can generate big plays. But also, like, there's game plan runs that are not in this offense yet. Um, and I know we're talking about Sam right now, but, you know, a lot of the big plays in the NFL in the run game happen because you set them up, and it's not something you can do. Like, you need kind of the right circumstances, but if you get it and you can get to it at the line of scrimmage especially, then sweet. And those aren't even installed right now because they take team-specific tweaks trying to use the way a certain player plays or the way that a team plays something in a very specific way 
And so I'm excited to see that week one against Arizona uh, with, with Eric Bieniemy looking at Eagle State from last year and saying, hey, like, how do, how do we get these big runs against what Jonathan Gannon does? But even without that stuff, the mix of quick game, the mix of screens, the mix of downfield stuff, the mix of protections was all very good for EB as a play caller. Set Sam up to be comfortable, confident, knew where he needed to go with the ball. And yes, ultimately, will it be harder when it's just a little bit faster? And does you know, do we hope he doesn't lose that? Yes, but all you can do is take the test in front of you and Sam pass with flying colors, uh, which really, um, really makes this comment so hilarious. Ravens fans got so in their feelings on the internet about losing the streak. Like, I don't think there were a bunch of commanders. Like, there were commanders fans celebrating the win. But no one was doing it seriously. Everyone was doing it with, like, tongue-in-cheek, wink-wink, this is fun. Like, yeah, you, you we ended your streak, ha Like, good-natured sports rooming. And then Baltimore Ravens fans took it as if you had taken a personal affront to the family member they loved the most and said just the worst things about them. Like Aaron Butler, 93-73. You played against Baltimore's threes and fours. Stop trying to slight Ravens greatness. I'm reading this in my angriest, uh, angriest voice I can that also sounds obnoxious. Stop trying to slight Ravens greatness. If you didn't know, then go learn something. Your first string is equal to Ravens third string. Not talk. It was proven. Ravens play A ball in A conference. Commanders play B ball in B conference. Baltimore Ravens all day, every day. I say this very confidently. What a loser. Seriously, what are you doing? Go touch grass. Go pet a dog. Go have an interaction with another human being. I, I like... And by the way, if you're Commanders fans and you're listening, you're like, ha, ah, tell them, Craig, Ravens. If you do this on anybody else's post, also go touch grass. It's going to be okay. Also, Aaron, your points are stupid and wrong, but that seems less important than you getting outside and interacting with another human being. I'm just doing this. I'm here for you as a service. Your first string is equal to Ravens' third string. Then why did the Commanders have more points at halftime when those two units exited? Because that's because they're better. That's not what equal means. Sad. I need to get touch grass immediately or pet a dog or move on to the next comment. Let's never read the comments on the Hoffman Show here on the Team 980. All right. Uh, on yesterday's first and tens, so these are my 10 observations from the game. I actually thought this one was interesting. Short, quick comment that is, I think, encapsulating of how much of the fan base feels right now, which is a great thing. L33 React says, this EB plus Josh Harris plus Hal combo might be our salvation. And look, we don't know what Hal is going to be. Obviously, I do think there's really great reasons to have hope. We have no idea how long Eric Benemy is going to be here. Is there a chance that he takes over next year as the head coach for Ron and is here for a long time and successful? Absolutely. Is there a chance he's the OC next year here? Uh, I think there's a chance of that for sure. Um, is there a chance he's gone elsewhere and gets a head coaching job and everyone's really happy for him? Yeah, and even that, like if he leaves a legacy of what it means to work hard and raises the standard and Tavita Pritchard then steps up as the OC and keeps that standard, um, I, th I think there's a chance that like, Evie's legacy here is, is far longer than his career here. And that would be amazing. And obviously, from an ownership standpoint, what Josh Harris is doing, um, besides giving hilarious interviews, um, is amazing. And even that's amazing. Like, he is being approachable. He is being a part of the community. He's being a part of the team as opposed to a guy who's like, oh, this is mine. Right? This is all good stuff. And engenders good feelings. And the biggest feeling that it engenders is hope. And there is nothing in sports like hope, uh, which gets us to some stuff that we'll talk about later of like, it's okay to be hopeful. It's okay to be looking ahead and saying like, hey, this could be something. And it's okay that that hope doesn't die with a week one loss. Uh, or I mean, look, 
a week one loss would not be great. But let's say even it happens. It doesn't mean all your hope is going to die. It doesn't mean that everything that you've been led to believe is wrong or everything that you believe based off your own observations is wrong. Progress is not going to be linear. And there's going to be bumps in the road. But the cool thing about hope is that you actually think it can get better. And whether that's quarterback, whether that's, you know, a competent coaching with the enemy brings, whether that's Harris and what he's bringing from the ownership suite, like the the difference besides all the criminality and stuff and the gen, you know, some of the other, like from a football sense, the difference between Harris and Snyder is under Snyder, it was never going to get better because he was too bad at the job of hiring good people to ever put together something sustainable. Because the people that operate in a way that create success are not people that appeal to Dan Snyder. People that operated cheaply, people that operated underhandedly, people that were kind of snake oil salesman type of personalities. Those are the people that appeal to Dan Snyder because that's who he was. Harris is a competent business professional who's going to be attracted to competent people who are good at their job. And so that is ultimately the biggest piece of this. And what gives you hope is that even if the Howell and Biennemi parts don't wind up working out as, as well as we think they might, and I certainly think they're going to work out. This is not me saying my opinion is actually everyone needs to slow down. No, I'm all in on Biennemi and I'm pretty in on Howell. But even if it doesn't go that way, there is a longer term hope here that I think is really refreshing and, and exciting uh, for those of us that plan to be in D.C. and caring about sports for a long time. Uh, other than that on first and 10, um, this was, I thought, an interesting comment. It's a little longer from Brian. Uh, Brian Mulholland, uh, 2467. In my humble opinion, it was the right decision to play Hal and play him as much as they did. Hal is a young QB. He needs reps. Every preseason reps uh, versus Baltimore's, two, or even preseason reps versus Baltimore's twos. I don't care about his stats. I don't care about the or I don't care about the results. What I care about is that he got to see NFL defense at something close to NFL speed. What I care about was he put the teachable moments on tape that he could learn from. What I care about is him getting more work to make the game slow down for him and become part of muscle memory. If Terry misses week one, that's not great. But as long as it's not a season-long impediment, this team is deep enough at wide receiver that it can handle that. It needs Hal to progress at warp speed because we need to know for 2024 whether we're in the QB market or not. The worst thing that could happen to this team is getting to the end of the year and not being sure whether Sam's the guy or not. He doesn't need to be a finished product. We have to know whether we got the guy. It's honestly, one of the smartest comments I've seen on the internet ever, uh, but it's one of the smartest things I've seen about the quarterback situation in Washington, period. And I think it's a good, valid thing that I hadn't really thought of in terms of, hey, maximizing the everything right now for Howell with this long-term vision. Where I, I would say the one area, it's not even disagreeing, it's just it's adding on to or, or kind of tangentially to that comment is they didn't have to play Terry the whole time. And that's the one that I think kills me is like Sam could have been out there with, with Deami Brown, Jahan Dotson and Curtis Samuel, which we know because when Terry left the game, they didn't pull everybody else. And I would have probably protected Terry specifically to pull out. I would have thought about Jahan, but I probably would have left Jahan out there just because Terry's higher on the pecking order, barely, but he's higher on the pecking order. He certainly earned it as a veteran guy on a big money contract compared to Jahan uh, in his second year, as good as I think he is. But kind of the 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 politics play a little bit of a, a role there. The point is, like, I want to make sure that it's good enough that Sam is going to succeed, but I don't. I want to minimize the risk as much as possible. And there is very little upside for Terry being out there outside of being an outlet for. Uh, Sam versus Jahan is, again, also in his second year and could use more reps uh, along the same line. So I think it's a really good point about, hey, even if it's marginal progress because it's the twos, it is progress. And playing him in these games is helpful for that reason. Obviously, he's not going to play on Saturday because you're now so close to the regular season. You just want to get him there healthy. But I think that's a really good point and And one, I, I don't think it's unreasonable um, at all. I actually agree with it um, in as, as much as I can while still acknowledging the uh, the risk that was there and that, you know, it, it was kind of a, a mixed bag going in. But also, I will say going in, we also thought that the tackle play was going to be a lot bigger concern. And to their credit, like, the tackles did a great job. According to Lewis Lucas in for Leno and Trent Scott in for, uh, for Andrew Wiley after that first series. All right. 
on the Should Howell Play video that we had from earlier in the week, um, there were some comments that made me want to absolutely lose my mind. Um, this one I kind of addressed already this week and actually led to, um, in part, one of the other videos uh, that we're going to talk about in the comments on it. But Red Wings 0142 said, this doesn't feel like a huge issue for me talking about the tackles. Just place, just put Lucas in, slide Cosme outside, and put Sadiq in at guard. <sighs> I know this game is over and I shouldn't be like I shouldn't be able to be triggered by this anymore but like the idea that you're going to take the guy that you're trying to get reps at right guard because he's barely played it and just kick him back out the tackle all willy-nilly like some of y'all don't think and about like the actual logistics of how the game works and how like th these are not movable pieces that are non-humans that you just boop 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 plug and play Plug and play the offensive line robot. Like Sam Cosme is a human being with a brain that is trying to process right guard. And he talked about how whiplashing it was during the offseason when he didn't even have to play, when he didn't really know what position he was going to play. And then he how much relief he felt when he finally got told, like, hey, dude, you're a right guard now. Does that mean in the regular season that you couldn't make that switch if you were in a dire spot? Of course not. But desperation is different than something you can plan for. So if one more person talks about Sam Cosme at right tackle, as long as Andrew Wiley is healthy this year, when Cosme is now committed to playing guard for the rest of his career and trying to be a Hall of Famer at it, like it's just, it just should be an auto block. I, I can't believe I got that mad about that again. What am I doing? I need to touch grass again. Uh, Steve4175 said, uh, if both tackles, speaking of, geez, good gracious. If both tackles are injured during a regular season game, do you pull Howell until they're healed or replacements at the same level are found? It's honestly, Anthony, I can't believe a human being typed that, looked at it, and went, yep, I'm going to hit send on this. That's reality, Craig. It's the priest. The game doesn't count in the standings. No. And someone else, thank God, commented that back. Like, no, because it's a regular season game. But again, like most people watching this are agreeing with us here on the smart side of the intelligence barrier. But some of y'all, whoo, your name's on the comment, man. Steve, people can click on your profile. Don't do that to yourself. Um, just uh, at least this guy, bad comments. We try to avoid the bad comments so it doesn't turn into like a comment bash fest. I did a bad job today, Anthony. That's on me. Uh, at user RQ8EW8KF1M. Brilliant on my, uh, when I ranted about why do some of you even like sports? Cause some people just like to be mad all the time and fire all the coaches. Goes brilliant. Attack football fans for having adverse opinions to your own. I didn't attack football fans for attack for having adverse opinions to your own. I asked why some of y'all like sports because it seems like you just want to fire people all the time. Um, but, you know, I guess that's why I got a radio show and you don't have a username. User RQ8EW8KF1M. Just saying. Uh, these comments I thought were really good. Uh, shockingly, there's names on them. Austin2591 says, I don't think this phenomenon is unique to DC fans by any stretch, but at the same time, we have to be the most snake-bit fan base in all professional sports. Year after year of, it'll be different this time. We have player A, coach B, exec C now. When it was all just the toxic machinations of one petty, vindictive man, I think a reflexive, knee-jerked instinct of, oh, fire that guy, trade that player, is going to take a little time to slowly heal itself. I think that's fair. I do think DC sports fans are like that. But I think the reason you still care is because you have that hope. And hopefully that, you know, that knee-jerk instinct can go like, all right, hey, let's see how this goes and let's let's cheer on the team along the way if you think that, you know, the decision was good on the front end. It's one thing. It's really hard to root for someone if you're like, you know, say they hire the next coach and you're like, this guy sucks. I know this guy sucks. I don't believe in this guy. What is Josh Harris doing? It's going to be really hard um, to give that guy a chance. But I just don't think that, it's a very fulfilling existence as a sports fan to just assume everyone's going to fail all the time. But when that's been your existence for 25 years, I get it. Um, Glenn Smith 491 says, what I don't understand is those fans who want to suffer pain in both August and December. I really come to the conclusion that many Washington fans would not know what to do if Washington was good. Um, I think that is also, though, it, like, I agree with this. Why, like, the hope in August 
I, I think some people think if they don't have hope in August and they're just negative all the time, then you won't feel the pain in December. But the truth is you just then are feeling pain, the negativity the entire time as opposed to having the hope. But, it, you know, and then the come down, the crash. And that's how people protect themselves emotionally is like, hey, if I don't get my hopes up, I can't be disappointed. How's that going for you? This is what I would ask. Um, but I do think that is also a very loud minority of the fan base because the number of people showing up, for instance, to the Baltimore preseason game or training camp or our event, Burgundy and Sold, says that there's a lot of people with a lot of optimism. And I do think it's important, again, I'm going to say this for the 800th time in this, this segment, to touch grass sometimes, get off the internet, get out of the comment section, which is why we only dip into it once a week, and be like, no, most people are actually doing the right things. It's just some uh, with with uh, specific complaints on the internet. Which brings us to, Anthony, the undisputed comment of the week from Lily518NC. Well said. Surprised to see so many men complain every chance they get. So that's a good concluding comment. I don't think I need to add to it. I don't think so either. I think I think it speaks for itself. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Gates from ESPN. It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Tell your mama I said what's up.